Hey, what's up, YouTube? This problem is from one of the MIT Integration B qualifying exams. Let's try to work through it. Solution. So I'm thinking we can write each of these roots to a power. So you know if you have the square root of x, that's the same thing as x to the 1 half. And if you have the cube root of x, that's the same thing as x to the 1 third. Okay? So here we have this giant square root on the outside. So I'm going to put an x here, and a parenthesis here, and a 1 half. So this is for that outer square root. So this is this x right here. Okay, And this 1 half is for the outer square root. Okay, Then we have times, because right, it's being multiplied. And then we have a cube root. So I'm going to make the parentheses a little bit smaller so it's easier to understand. So here's 1 third, and then here's x. Okay, So this x is this x right here. Okay. Good stuff. And then the next one would be a fourth root. I'm going to make it even smaller. So let's see, parentheses, x, parentheses, and this is one fourth. So that's this x uh, right here, dot, dot, dot. So we've basically rewritten the integrand. This piece here is called the integrand uh, in terms uh, of you know, things to a powers, right? So with exponents. So let's try to think about what's going on. So first of all, this x right here, it's only being raised to the one-half power, right? So we have x to the one-half. Beautiful stuff. This one here is being raised to the one-third power. But then it's also x to the one-third, but it's also in this outer parentheses. So it's x to the one-third to the one-half. And when you have stuff like this, the rule is that you multiply. So it's one-third times one-half. That's the rule. It's the property of exponents. So that's x to the, let me write it like this, uh, 1 over 3 times 2 times 1. That's the same thing as 3 factorial, right? Extra knowledge. But I'll, I'll write it like this. x to the 1 over 3 times 2. So it's going to be a 3 factorial. And the next one is 1 fourth times 1 third times 1 half. So that's going to be times x to the 1 over 4 times 3 times 2, which is, which is 4 factorial times dot, dot, dot. So you see what's going to happen is we're getting an infinite uh, sum. You say, how do you get an infinite sum? Well, when you multiply things with the same bases, you add the exponents, right? Check this out. This is super cool. Plus, right? You're adding exponents. And so this ends up being... So if you write this in summation notation, right? It's an infinite sum. And looks like it starts at 2. So it's 1 over n factorial and starting at 2, and we're going to infinity. So that's the key step, I guess. And now um, you need some information from calculus. So recall that if you have e to the x, this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. In particular, e is equal to e to the 1 which is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of 1 to the n, which is just 1 over n factorial. So here we have n equals 2, right? So the idea is to write that in a clever way. So if you have n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, you can write that as the first term, so 1 over 0 factorial. The next one would be 1 over 1 factorial. The next one would be 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, etc. So the rest of it starts at 2. Right? The rest of it starts at 2. Right? And this here is equal to e. So e, so e is equal to 1, right? 0 factorial is 1, plus um, 1, plus infinite sum as n runs from 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. Beautiful stuff. So e is equal to 2 plus this infinite sum. What a cool problem, right? This problem is awesome. Um, and now you can solve for this. So I'll do it over here. So the infinite sum as n runs from 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, it's just going to be e minus 2. So this is equal to x to the e minus 2. <laughs> so our integral Right, our integral is really just the integral of x to the e minus 2. Let me go back up so you see what we did. I forgot the dx there. but So this whole thing here 
is just x to the e minus 2, right? That, that's all it is. Uh, really, really cool stuff. dx, kind of rushed through parts of this video, but didn't want to uh, let it take up forever. And now you just use the power rule, so you add 1. So you add 1 to this, so you get x to the e minus 1, and then you divide by that number, e minus 1, and then just plus c. And that's the final answer. So I hope this video uh, has been enlightening or helpful in some way to someone out there. That's it.